For John Jackson and now the defensive coordinator, Clancy Pendergast, brought to you by Ralph's. Get ready for your next big game. Let Ralph's help make game time a little easier. Place your order today for ready-made party platters at your neighborhood Ralph's Deli or ralphs.com slash order online. All right, Coach, thank you for joining us uh, again tonight. And, uh, you know, we welcomed you back in the spring. And now, if you can believe it, we're already at the midway point of the season. So uh, give us a sort of a mid-season evaluation on, on how you feel like the defense has performed. Yeah, I think the last couple of weeks we've uh, been a little bit more disruptive than we were earlier in the year, and I think it's kind of a function of um, us coming together as a defense and, you know, getting more time around each other and when the live bullets are flying. Uh, you know, you start off with Alabama and then Utah State and Stanford and then Utah and, and so on and so forth. I, I feel like the longer we played, we kind of uh, – the guys are getting more comfortable with things that we want to do and, and maybe, uh, you know, guys are – fitting into their role a little bit better as we've progressed through the season. You know, Coach, obviously you were here before, and now you're here for the second time being at USC. Uh, how, how long or how much time does it really take to get a defense or uh, uh, the personnel molded to the defense you're trying to run? How, you know, what's the learning curve? Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time from a communication standpoint for the guys to get comfortable. The, the spring ball, the offense was a lot further ahead, obviously, than we were because they've been together for some time. So we were kind of just trying to get lined up, and I think once we understood the formations and the adjustments, then we kind of were able to teach the run fits. And, and uh, you know, it took us a good amount of time. And, uh, you know, when you when you bounce around from playing a pro-style team to a spread team, back to a pro-style, then spread, and then tempo, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. So the guys have worked hard at feeling uh, comfortable within the scheme, and I think – the more that, that we play and, and the more the guys get out there together and, and uh, on Saturdays, the, the better off we'll be. Yeah, you saw some pro-style teams early, and then you've seen a little bit more spread lately. I'm, I'm wondering, one of the issues you, you sort of inherited was this lack of defensive line depth and a lot of experience at that spot. Is it a coincidence that you have played a little bit better against some of these spread teams when maybe you don't have to put quite as many defensive linemen on the field and your base defense really has been sort of nickel for the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think we're a faster team than we are maybe a bigger team. Than, uh, we like to maybe not necessarily play in a phone booth all the time. We like for things to be spread out a little bit. I think it, it lend, lends to our personnel a little bit more to, to play uh, that style of game. And we got more guys that can run and hit. And we can play more of a two defensive linemen uh, look with the spread offenses as opposed to playing more three down looks versus the more pro style teams. You know, you, in the last couple of games, we've noticed that there's been a lot more pressures. It's sort of been forcing the issue. I mean, Arizona State, they didn't know what to do with it. And then it caused Colorado a lot of problems as well. Uh, what's been the sort of the key to the pressure? What did you see that said, hey, look, we have to sort of change things around a little bit, get a little bit more pressure and force the issue? Well, we'd had the uh, pressures in. It's not like any of them that, that we're doing or, or – new maybe there's some tweaks week in and week out but it's just part of the system that we implemented last spring and throughout fall camp so when we go into a game and decide to pressure a little bit more it's not like the guys aren't ready for it in terms of the execution and I think uh, you know as a defense you want to be able to play your base stuff and be able to fit it and feel good about it but when you do pressure, you also want to be able to fit those as well. So I, I, it's kind of been the plan all along that we wanted to get into the first few games and, you know, play good solid technique up front uh, and really at all three levels of our defense versus the run and then maybe cut the guys loose a little bit once uh, we started Pac-12 play, and that's what we've done the last two weeks. Uh, Dory Jackson has always been a tremendous athlete, but he is playing significantly better, at least to, to us, at the, at the cornerback position this year than, than he was last year. What what did you and, and Ronnie Bradford focus on when you, when you took on uh, uh, Dory? And obviously you didn't get really get to take him on until fall camp. Right. Well, Ronnie's done a great job of getting him caught up to speed, and, and uh, we meet as a group with the inside linebackers in the secondary a lot together. <laughs> And so I'm in there a lot with the DBs, and, and uh, that, that's that's the position that I've coached the yeah. most as a position coach. So, uh, but there's a lot of communication that goes on, in, you know, behind the scenes in the meetings, and he's really come on and and um, gotten better every week. He's very coachable, and you know, the thing that comes to my mind uh, right away when people ask about Adore was the very first time uh, we scrimmaged over in the Coliseum, and. And they had a, we had a live goal line situation. He came up and made a couple of tackles for loss. That you know this guy isn't isn't just a, a track guy playing football. He's right. a football player. So you know he's gotten better every week, and he allows us 
uh, to be able to match him up uh, maybe on their best receiver, maybe on a certain side, and gives us that flexibility. But uh, he, he's, he's uh, play, playing better, and, and he knows that he can play even better than what he is, and we expect him to down the stretch. You've watched a lot of football. You, you've seen many picks like the one he had on Saturday. I mean, it was pretty <laughs> remarkable. Yeah, I still didn't believe it when they <laughs> finally said it's USC ball. Like, <laughs> you guys are kidding me, you know, when I'm asking the press box, you sure we got the ball? <laughs> Hey, talk about um, a couple of players. Um, Michael Hutchings and Leon McQuay both were here mm -hmm. when you were here the first time, and now, you know, when you were when you weren't here, they didn't have it. Their careers didn't flourish, let's put it that way, as much as they were when you were here. Mm -hmm. Now you come back, and it's like an infusion. These players, these guys are playing, you know, their best football that they played here at USC. What is it about your system that fits them? Uh, you know, uh, Mike. Starting off talking about Mike, he's was kind of the ringleader through spring with Cam being out. You know, running the defense, making all the checks, understanding what's going on and getting all the live reps and just continuing to make progress through spring and and uh, through fall camp. And, and I knew he was going to be one of our best 11 players. I just wasn't exactly sure where we would play him and where we would play Cam and and uh, where we, Quentin Powell would fit into that mix and John Houston and Jordan Iosefa. Those are all guys that I got that I'm really high on as well. But I'm really excuse me, proud of the progress that Mike's uh, made. You know, he's, he's a true gym rat. He loves the game. He's up there studying all the time. Uh, he has people gravitate towards him, and he's really, really truly has become a leader of our defense. I'm really proud of the way he's playing, and I think he's only going to get better, and he's going to play himself into getting an opportunity to at least make a team on Sundays. And then Leon started a few games for me <clears throat> when he was a true freshman, and I thought he was going to have a fabulous career and uh, for whatever reason, the last couple of years uh, didn't go the way that, that he wanted. So I was excited to get an opportunity to coach him again. And he's really a guy that, that we move around and use in different spots. And the game is really slowing down for both of those guys. And he's a very diligent uh, guy in terms of watching film and bringing the DBs in there to watch tape and, and uh, everybody's speaking the same language. So those are two guys I'm really excited about how they play the first first half of the season. All right, well, thank you for joining us, Coach. A pretty good uh, coaching matchup this weekend. Rich Rodriguez offense against a Clancy Pendergast defense. That'll be fun to watch. 12.30 kick in Tucson on Saturday. TV Fox Radio here, ESPN LA, 710. We'll get